Hi dear medicos, myself Dr. Krishneshri and our channel is back again. So, in the last session we were discussing about the basic anatomy and physiology of nervous system. Is it not? So, I think you are happy with that. You understood everything. So, from today you will be understanding what I am saying in a better way. Today we are directly going to weakness and paralysis. So, today uh, what we are going to discuss is first we will be saying about weakness then there are some terms which is in relation with weakness but it is not weakness. So, we should uh, differentiate when the patient says that he is having weakness we should differentiate that. So, we will be discussing some terms then we will be going to paralysis and the most important focus of this session is upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion or upper motor neuron paralysis and lower motor neuron paralysis. And also in short we will be saying about motor unit in order to understand the upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron lesion clearly. You understand? Okay. So, first we will see what is weakness. So, what is weakness? We all know that there is a particular power for the muscle so that the muscle is working properly. There, should, there is a power to the muscle. So, when there is reduction in power of this muscle, it is known as weakness. So, this reduction in power, it may be of single muscle or many muscle. So, when there is reduction in power of the muscle, it is known as weakness. Now, we will see some of the terms which is in relation with weakness that we misunderstood on weakness. So, first term is increased fatigability increased fatigability ok. So, in increased fatigability what happens is uh, the suppose in order to do a for 20 years old male he is he have to uh, sustain the activity for a particular job for about 2 minutes suppose. So, in case of increased fatigability, if a 20 year male person is should sustain the power for about 2 minutes for a particular activity for example. So, in case of increased fatigability, the person will be having inability to sustain the power. You understand? Inable to sustain the power in order to do a particular activity. If it is suppose we told that it is if it is 2 minutes, this person can sustain the power only for about 1 minute. So, the person can do the activity, but he cannot sustain the same power uh, till the activity get completed. It is known as increased fatigability. So, the person will be saying that he is having weakness. So, we should differentiate this from weakness. Weakness is there is the power is totally reduced here. There is power, but as the activity goes on there will be weakness in this power and the patient cannot sustain this power till the completion of this activity. You got it? That is increased fatigability. Then second term is known as bradykinesia. Brady kinesia. So, Brady means reduced and kinesia means movement. So, in Brady kinesia, the person will be having reduced movement that is power will be reduced and he will take more time to get the maximum power. Okay. So, he will start with less power as the time increases the power will be getting more. It is but in increased fatigability at first there will be power and as the activity goes on the power will be reduced. Sustainability is less. But in case of bradykinesia at first the uh, power, the activity power will be less and he will uh, have so many time. He will have to wait for many time in order to get the maximum power that is bradykinesia. And third is apraxia, apraxia. So, apraxia means in order to perform, inability to perform the skilled movements. So, there are so many skilled movements such as driving is a skilled movement, writing is a skilled movement, uh, then uh, swimming is a skilled movement. So, a person has the inability to perform the skilled movements. It is known as apraxia. So, these are the terms which will be getting confused with the weakness. If the patient says that term uh, and the, he will be using the same term weakness for 
everything you understand so we should differentiate by asking the history or uh, by asking the character of the weakness to that patient you understand next we will discuss about paralysis so what is paralysis paralysis is also a weakness but the weakness is so severe in case of paralysis the weakness is so severe so that the muscle cannot contract you understand muscle will not be contracting at all in case of paralysis and there is complete absence of power okay uh, weakness weakness is at its maximum level severity of the weakness is more in case of paralysis then there is another term known as paresis paresis so this paresis paresis is also a weakness but the uh, range of weakness or the weakness is mild or moderate in case of paresis you understand paralysis there is the weakness is complete the weakness is severe in case of paresis the weakness is mild or moderate so these are the terms you should understand before understanding about paralysis that is upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion you understand you are happy with these terms is it not okay then next we are going to discuss about motor unit motor unit motor unit so this motor unit is well explained in harrison okay so in order to uh, uh, know about the lower motor neural lesion we should be well versed with the motor unit so motor unit motor unit comprises of a lower motor neuron a single segment of lower motor neuron and the muscle and muscle fibers supplied with this lower motor neuron so now we will see what is a motor unit so we all know that lower motor neuron starts from the spinal cord uh, spinal cord it starts from the brain stem there is lower motor from the brain stem there is lower motor neuron and also from the spinal cord there is lower motor neuron so from the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord lower motor neuron arises so suppose this is the spinal cord you think that this is spinal cord this is spinal cord and this is the anterior part and this is the posterior part of the spinal cord anterior this is concerned with the movement and this is concerned with the sensory is it not so this is the anterior horn cell okay so and this is the muscle anterior horn cell and the muscle so from the anterior horn cell in lower motor neuron two types of in lower motor neuron two types of uh, what um, there are two parts in a lower motor neuron the first part is alpha part and second part is the gamma part so this is pyramidal tract pyramidal tract it ends in the anterior horn cell this forms the upper motor neuron and here there is synapses is it not synapses and from here lower motor neuron arises lower motor neuron arises okay so here this lower motor neuron it consists of two segments two segments it is known as one is known as alpha segment and second is known as gamma segment okay alpha segment and gamma segment and this forms synopsis in the not uh, synapsis in the not synopsis synapsis synops synapsis in the muscle so here this alpha part it is responsible for the voluntary activity it is responsible for the voluntary activity and this gamma part it is responsible for the tone of the muscle okay so alpha part it is responsible for the voluntary activity and the gamma part it is responsible for the tone of the muscle you understand about motor unit we will we will come to tone of the muscle and all uh, now itself so this is motor unit you understand this carefully so that it will be easy for you to understand about the lower motor neuron lesion now we will go to upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion 
So, in upper motor neuron, we all know that the lesion will be in the upper motor neuron and in lower motor neuron lesion, the lesion will be in the lower motor neuron. So, so depending upon the site of the lesion, in the course of the pyramidal tract, the, uh, uh, the affection will be varying in the body, you understand. So, first we will see depending upon the site, how the affection of this uh, lesion varies. So, suppose this is the this is the primary motor area, primary motor area, this is corona radiata, everything you know in detail, then this all tracks will be going through the internal capsule, from the internal capsule it will be coming downwards, this is the brain stem, midbrain, pons and medulla and in the medulla these fibers most of the fibers decussate la. so most of the fibers decussate forming a pyramid coming downwards downwards and in the spinal cord suppose this is a segment of spinal cord you think that this is a segment of spinal cord which supplies the upper limb upper limb some of the uh, uh, some of the uh, what parts of the tract decussates here and it forms the lower motor neuron and suppose this is the segment which supplies the lower limb rest of the so comes and gets it here and this is the last segment of the spinal cord you understand this this is the course of the pyramidal tract so suppose we will look for, we look for the lesions depending upon the site how the symptomatology varies so here suppose this is the right side and this is the left side Okay, so suppose the lesion is here, very, 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 very smallest tract of a corona, uh, smallest tract which is included in the corona radiator is affected. So, what happens if it is affected, what happens is very small area, this is the left side, is it not? So, very small area in the right side of the person will be affected understand very small area sometimes it will not be uh, what absorbed by the patients itself so it is a very small lesion and so it will not be absorbed by the patients then suppose if the internal capsule the biggest area the internal capsule is affected internal capsule all the fibers of this pyramidal tract passes through the internal capsule so it is before what crossing crossing is in the medulla so before crossing is the internal capsule all the fibers in one side of the pyramidal tract will be passing through the internal capsule of that particular side and if the left sided internal capsule is affected then there will be right sided hemiplegia right sided hemiplegia you understand all the fibers in the left side is passing through the internal capsule of the left side and the lesion is in the internal capsule so there will be right sided hemiplegia what is the meaning of hemi hemi means one side one side of the body will be affected you understand next if the lesion is here that is just below the medulla after crossing just below the medulla after crossing if the lesion is there then what happens all the limbs will be affected that is tetraplegia tetra tetra means four la four tetraplegia plegia is paralysis okay plegia means paralysis then uh, tetra means four all the four limbs will be affected suppose if the lesion is here it supplies the upper limb if the lesion is in the area which supplies the upper limb or lesion is there which supplies the lower limb then the patient will go for paraplegia 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 means which runs parallelly that is both the arms or both the lower limbs will be affected both upper limbs or both lower limbs will be affected so these are the types of lesion according to the site and these all are upper motor neuron lesion understand upper motor neuron lesion so uh, this is the second order neuron from the segment which supplies the uh, upper limb and this is the second order neuron from the uh, segment which supplies the lower limb suppose if this is affected then the patient will be going for lower uh, 
motor neuron paralysis of that particular limb or uh, lower motor neuron paralysis of that particular motor unit understand so you know about motor unit so suppose the lower motor neuron is affected what happens the uh, symptoms will be uh, pertaining to that particular motor neuron only so these are the lower motor neuron lesions and all this comes under and rest of uh, this comes under the uh, upper motor neuron lesion these are lower motor neuron lesions you understand depending upon the site of the lesion Next, we are going to talk about the lesions which is depending upon some of the uh, specific terms uh, like tone, okay. We will be discussing about uh, tone, bulk of the muscle, uh, then what, uh, fasciculations like that, okay. So, we will discuss that in detail. So, this is a very important class which uh, discusses about upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion which is the most important symptom as far as neurology is concerned. So, first we will discuss about tone of the muscle. What is tone of the muscle? Tone is the strength. Okay. So, tone is the uh, resistance of the muscles to passive uh, what stretch, resistance of the muscle to passive stretch is known as tone, tone. So, suppose I am keeping my hand like this, okay, my hand is kept like this. So, what happens? Passively it will not go downwards, I am keeping it or else I am holding the hand like this, okay, I am going to write, I am holding the hand like this. Uh, and I have a tone in my muscles because of this tone my hand is uh, what hand is kept in the position where I kept you understand otherwise if there is no tone what happens this passive stretching so the, if there is no resistance or if there is no tone my hand will go like this it will not be kept in the particular position so because of my muscle tone my hand is kept in a particular position you understand so this is the resistance tone is the resistance of the muscles to a uh, to passive stretching so tone in case of upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion, there will be variation in the tone of the muscle. You understand? So, we told that the gamma segment of the lower motor neuron is responsible for the tone. You do not forget that, then it will be easy for you to understand. So, suppose regarding the tone uh, in upper motor neuron, what happens? In lower motor neuron, what happens? Okay. So, in upper motor neuron what happens? There is lesion in the upper motor neuron segment. There is no lesion in the lower motor neuron segment. You understand? Upper motor neuron is affected somewhere there. But lower motor neuron is intact. Suppose, if it is like that, supply is the lower motor neuron. So, tone what happens? The tone will be more. Why? The gamma segment that is the lower motor neuron is intact. So, the gamma segment is also intact. So, there will be tone is more in case of upper motor neuron lesion because this upper motor neuron is the thing which modulates the tone of the muscle. So, upper motor neuron is the thing which says how much tone I should have, how much tone I should have to punch a person, more power should be there. La. The tone, the resistance should be more. Uh, how much uh, tone I need to pluck a flower? Less. How much tone I need to uh, write here? Medium. So, upper motor neuron uh, is the one who says how much tone is needed. It modulates the tone. But lower motor neuron will not modulate. It just keep the tone, the tone in the maximum. You understand? And upper motor neuron modulates the tone. So, what happens in case of upper motor neuron lesion, there is nothing to modulate the tone. There is nothing to modulate the tone. So, what happens? The tone is more in case of upper motor neuron. The tone is more in case of upper motor neuron lesion. It is known as spasticity. Hypertonicity in upper motor neuron lesion is known as spasticity. You, will be, you heard about clasp knife, is it not? Clasp knife is a type of spasticity. Clasp knife means what happens is, so the tone is very much, so we are uh, trying to flex our uh, what elbow. 
suppose if we are trying to flex our elbow and if i am having a upper motor neuron lesion what happens the lower the tone is more right? so i am trying 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 and at the maximum what happens is suddenly what stretching happens suddenly at the maximum this uh, what happens uh, flexion happens the action will be completed it is known as slowly what about uh, when we are flexing normally what happens is we will be flexing like this right? but in case of upper motor neuron lesion if i am trying to stretch uh, flex my elbow what happens is the tone is maximum because there is no upper motor neuron to control my tone and at the maximum what happens suddenly the tone loses and and i get I, the flexing will be more severe you understand it is known as clasp knife uh, rigidity clasp knife means e nerathe la pichathi le katti pichathi so palaya kalatha katti so what happens katti thorakkumba engena sambhavikka adiyam buddhimuttalla ingena thorna pettana thinge thorannu poru adu pole katti adakkumba endha sambhavikka we cannot easily close this knife uh, at first it is very difficult to close and suddenly it will close is it not that is what is known as clasp knife spasticity and it is like that the uh, when i am trying to flex the lip what happens is uh, the uh, tone at the maximum tone suddenly it will flex it is known as clasp knife spasticity understand clasp knife spasticity regarding the tone in upper motor neuron lesion but what happens in lower motor neuron lesion the lower motor neuron is affected that so there is no tone at all and it leads to flaccidity flaccidity you understand you understand so motor unit is not working that is uh, gamma motor neuron which is responsible for the tone of the muscle is not working so in lower motor neuron lesion there will be flaccidity and in upper motor neuron lesion there will be spasticity and the spasticity of upper motor neuron is like that of clasp knife you understand okay okay then regarding the tone there are two uh, another tone known as uh, rigidity that is also increased tone increased tone rigidity is also an increased tone and this rigidity there is lead pipe rigidity lead pipe rigidity in lead pipe rigidity always at every time during the activity this tone is maintained same that is there will be more tone which is maintained always in the activity lead pipe rigidity which is seen in parkinsonism Le lead pipe rigidity the patient will be have lead pipe like lead pipe it will be strong tone it will not be moving it will be like this suppose i am uh, uh, so i am having lead pipe rigidity here i cannot flex the uh, what uh, my elbow at all you understand but in case of uh, spasticity clasp knife spasticity at the maximum when i am trying maximum and the tone is reached the maximum my action will be completed but in case of uh, lead pipe rigidity the tone will be maximum or there will be same tone every time no flexion is possible it is like lead pipe like strong it will be like this we cannot do the activity that is lead pipe rigidity and there is another uh, rigidity known as cog wheel rigidity cog wheel rigidity so what is cog wheel uh, in uh, your android phone uh, what is the symbol of that settings so in android phone there are so many things for settings there is a particular symbol is it not like this it will be almost similar to like the setting will be like this the symbol will be like this so this is known as cog wheel okay this is known as cog wheel so in case of cog wheel rigidity at first the patient will be moving smoothly then there will be torn then it will be sustaining for some time then it comes to normal then again it will be lasting for normal sometimes then there will be increased tone sustaining for some time then it will be coming to uh, normal then normal tone like that the rigidity will be like this at first if the patient is trying to flex the elbow at first the rigidity will be like this we it will come then it will be strong then it will come then it will be strong it will come then uh, there will be increased tone then it will flex then there will be increased tone flex increased tone flexed increased tone 
it will be like this. So, this is known as cogwheel wheel rigidity. Both this lead pipe and cog wheel rigidity, it is not seen in upper motor neuron lesion. It is seen in extra pyramidal tract lesion such as Parkinsonism. As I am saying about the tone of the muscle, I am explaining this also. You understand? So, regarding the uh, upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion, in upper motor neuron lesion, there will be increased tone of the muscle because there is no upper motor neuron to modulate the tone and so there will be increased tone of the muscle and it results in spasticity which is known as class spinal spasticity and in case of lower motor neuron, the tone is gone. Okay, lower motor neuron is not there. So, tone is gone and there will be flaccidity. You understand? The tone is hypertonia or flaccidity. Here it is hypertonia. You understand? Next, first is tone of the muscle. Second is bulk of the muscle. Bulk of the muscle. Okay. So, regarding the bulk of the muscle, this uh, what alpha alpha is concerned with the normal bulk of the muscle alpha part of the lower motor neuron is concerned with the normal bulk of the muscle okay it is concerned with the voluntary activity and it is also concerned with the normal bulk of the muscle so what happens in case of upper motor neuron the bulk will there is no chance of atrophy why alpha is intact lower motor neuron is intact so what happens this upper motor neuron atrophy is not present understand atrophy is not present and there may be disuse atrophy there may be disuse atrophy why disuse atrophy suppose uh, one of our uh, arm is paralyzed do you think so we cannot move is it not if we are not moving the arm then what happens this muscle will not work so uh, it will be lazy Huh? It will be lazy, it will be staying like that uh, for so many times and one day it will get smaller. That is disuse atrophy. It is seen in case of fractures and all. For fractures and all, one and a half months, three months we will be keeping. La, we will be stabilizing um, uh, what our arm. So what happens uh, one day when we remove this plaster of Paris, what happens? The patient may get atrophy due to this disuse. We are not moving the particular part and we will get atrophy. So, be careful if you are not using the brain for so many days, what happens? Brain will go for atrophy. It is not like that, but you be, be very careful, okay? You should use your brain, otherwise, it may go for atrophy, disuse atrophy, okay? So, that is upper motor neuron lesion. You understand? In upper motor neuron lesion, there is no atrophy because why? Lower motor neuron that is the alpha part of the lower motor neuron which is responsible for the trophy or which is responsible for the bulk of the muscle is intact. But in case of lower motor neuron what happens there will be atrophy. Atrophy is present. Why? You just think why the lower motor neuron is diseased. So what happens the alpha part of the lower motor neuron which is responsible for the bulk of the muscle is not present it is not working so the muscle will go for atrophy you understand okay this is regarding the tone of the muscle and bulk of the muscle next third third we are going to discuss about the reflexes reflexes so reflexes are stretch reflexes Allah. stretch reflexes so here this lower motor neuron is responsible for the uh, what activity that is it is the first uh, thing which uh, induces the activity you understand first thing which induces the activity or which, which is the first thing which is responsible for stretch reflex lower motor neuron and upper motor neuron is the thing which controls this lower motor neuron you think upper motor neuron li is like a traffic police okay so what happens suppose a vehicle is going traffic police will say stop La. But in case of lower motor neuron, so it will be exciting the action and upper motor neuron will say stop, this is enough, like that, you understand. So in order to take a thing from here, I need only this force, I do not want this much of force, you understand, that is the thing. So in case of reflexes, lower motor neuron is the thing that excites the reflexes, that starts the reflexes and upper motor neuron is the thing which controls the lower motor neuron. So, what happens in case of 
human lesion what happens to reflexes what happens in lower upper motor neuron lesion upper motor neuron is not there it is uh, injured uh, so upper motor neuron is not there to control the lower motor neuron so this as far uh, as soon as we what induce the uh, reflex this lower motor neuron starts the reflex very rapidly okay and as a result of that the stretch reflex will be what hyper reflexia will be there because upper motor neuron is not there to control so there will be hyper reflexia or the uh, what uh, this will be brisk brisk reflexes or hyper reflexia will be there in case of upper motor neuron and in case of lower motor neuron as there is no uh, what uh, lower motor neuron in order to induce the reflex so what happens there will be hyporeflexia hyporeflexia or there is absent reflex hyporeflexia or absent reflex understand so tone bulk and reflexes next fourth is fasciculations fasciculations so regarding the fasciculations this motor unit is responsible for fasciculation second order neurons are anterior horn cell or motor unit is responsible for fasciculation so what happens is this fasciculation is more in case of lower motor neuron lesions because this anterior horn cell is diseased or this lower motor neuron is diseased what happens is this anterior horn cells is uh, it may slowly uh, create a what uh, small tonicity okay tonicity in the particular area supplied by this motor unit and hence the fasciculations will be seen in lower motor neuron lesions and it is absent in upper motor neuron lesions okay next next is babinski's reflex babinski's reflex is a superficial reflex la superficial reflex and it is also a primitive reflex so this babinski's is normally it is a flexor response normally it is a flexor response and in case of upper motor neuron lesion what happens this babinski's reflex will be extensor it will be present or extensor reflexes will be seen in case of upper motor neuron lesion you understand so in case of upper motor neuron lesion plantar lesion is extensor or present and in case of lower motor neuron it is flexor in lower motor neuron it is flexor you understand primitive lesions it is more concerned with the what upper motor neuron when the upper motor neuron lesion upper motor neuron become diseased or injured or something happens to that this primitive reflex starts appearing and the most important thing to start appearing is babinski's reflex which becomes extensor or it is present in case of upper motor neuron lesion so these are the major differences between upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion i will say in short in case of tone upper motor neuron it is spasticity you know the pathology is it not i am not going to the detail again lower motor neuron it is flaccidity in case of bulk of the muscle in case of upper motor neuron there is no atrophy uh, there is chance of only diseased atrophy and in lower motor neuron there is chance of atrophy and in case of reflexes upper motor neuron it will be hyperreflexia lower motor neuron there will be hyporeflexia or absent reflex in case of fasciculations only in lower motor neuron lesion there will be fasciculations and in babinski's primitive reflex or plantar reflex or babinski's reflex it is extensor or present in upper motor neuron lesion and it is normal or flexor in lower motor neuron lesion so this is the most important differences so we will stop the session today next day we will go to another some some small types of reflexes are there we uh, sorry small small types of paralysis are there we should go for that in detail and we will go how to evaluate a case of what paralysis and weakness so i think you enjoy the session uh, clearly you are very happy with the session if you are happy with the session please subscribe share to your friends any doubts please 
comment in my comment box awaiting comments thank you so much